Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Whale Island. In the last episode, our Whale Island explorers successfully mutated the fin tail into their tribe, crowning our very first mermaid princess. Lapis is now sitting high atop her throne, trying to call out to any wanderers who may have gotten stuck on this whale as well. So far, we have found one female who seemed to claw her way from the sea, and she had the scorpion tail in her genetics. So I think this will be a pretty good way for us to pull more of those special genes into our tribe. But the other thing we're hoping to do today is finally make our way to one of these stinky fruit trees. If we use these, we should be able to unlock the purse now, and I'm super excited to start playing with that. But I guess first things first, we should probably work toward getting some more food. If Lapis is going to invite more creatures into our tribe, we're going to need to make sure we have the food to spare. And the bunnies might be a pretty good place to start. North is actually trying to track them down right now, and she's trying to defend all of our berry bushes from their greedy paws too. We do have some roots that Cuckoo could dig up with his mate. If we scoot him on over here, then he should be able to supply us with a nice big feast. The digging paws would be excellent to pair with the digging trunk now. Can you imagine how much food we could gather on the mountains if we had one of those prehistoric genes on our side? Unfortunately, we won't be finding any glaciers out here, but it is something for us to keep in mind for the future. Now I guess we're going to have Lesla settle down between the babies. It looks like that's about all that she can do. She can protect our youngest as we get ready to skip the day again, and hopefully see if Lapis will be a little bit more successful today. She has grown her third and final gem, so she has a little bit more energy to spare. Let's just make sure that nobody is wandering around here already. We have taken care of one of the rogue males, so at least that's one worry off of our backs. But it looks like, aside from those bunnies skittering around in the distance, as always, you guys are all alone. So go ahead and sing your songs again, and we'll see if maybe this time somebody wants to join you. Oh, unfortunately not, Lapis. You're going to have to try to sing a little bit louder to catch somebody's attention. But that gives North a good opportunity to go chasing after the bunnies. We'll bring Rocco, I guess? up here to take care of her berry bush, so you can lure the bunnies into your trap. They are the eldest siblings, so I guess it makes sense that they work very well together. We'll leave her right there with her extra turn for now, though it is interesting to see that we have so many of these poison berry bushes out here. I think one of our more adventurous creatures, one of our brave and courageous souls, is going to have to investigate those very soon. I feel like we'll need the toxic body if we're going to pair our creatures with the scorpion tail, since it doesn't seem to give them any form of poison resistance. It would be a little bit more beneficial for us. Are you hiding under Rocco? Oh, and the tall grass too. North is not going to be very happy about that. I guess maybe we could have Cuckoo swoop in but I have a feeling that Bunny is going to skitter away. He might be able to startle it into North. Oh, he confused it completely. Excellent. So we have a whole bunch of meat to pick up on the next turn. Hopefully that's not going to snag the attention of any wandering Berginas. Though I'd imagine that if any potential tribe mates were wandering in the area, they would be a bit more inclined to join us if they saw all of this food lying around then they would know that we have plenty to offer. Oh no, poor Sunny. She scared away her first mole. Oh, the poor thing. She must be very embarrassed. Right in front of her mother, too. Well, I think she might just make it her mission to try to find some more of those moles to prove herself against them. Let's go ahead and skip the turn, though. And then we'll see if third time's the charm for Lapis. We might just want to have North pounce on the bunnies first, just so we can save all of those delicious berries. We don't want to lose those in the process. So we have all of this bunny meat lying around here now. Let's see if anybody is interested in feasting with us. 
Oh my goodness. She came zooming out of the darkness. Hello, little one. Oh, it looks like she's carrying the beak snout this time. Excellent. She's not showing any of the new genetics, and she does have some rather unfortunate traits. The deformed paws, the short-sighted eyes, and a little bit of infertility too. But since she does have one of our very special new genetics, we are still going to invite her to the tribe. Oh, don't go after the poison berries, little one. I don't think you're going to enjoy that meal very much. Well, I'd be surprised if Lapis can call another creature in the same turn, but we might as well give it a try. Yeah, looks like Ananame didn't have any friends tagging along with her. That's okay, though. We'll pick up some much safer food for her, and until we find her a suitable mate, maybe she could actually help us by knocking down some extra acorns from this tree. Excellent. While she can't pick them up, this would be a great way for her to get to know her new leaders. And speaking of which, we are getting very close to the end of Cuckoo and Anir's lifespan, so maybe we'd want to consider having a few more babies with them. That way, Lapis won't be all alone with her tail fin. Maybe we can find her a little mermaid brother or sister to help her with her job. Now with those two running legs, I think Sunny would be a pretty good candidate for picking up the stinky fruits. So even though she's rather young, we'll bring her up here to join North, and we'll see if on the next turn, they can get to work picking up all of those stinky fruits. We might as well give Elazla the chance to have another baby too, so we can keep spreading that scorpion tail all around the tribe. But for now, it looks like that's the end of our turns, so we'll go ahead and skip the day again. So far, we've been pretty lucky with the Baryinas too. I know the previous time I attempted to conquer Whale Island, the Baryinas were absolutely everywhere. But so far, this place is quiet as can be, aside from the rogue males in the grass. Oh, he's actually super close to Lapis. I guess all of her singing has attracted a little bit of unwanted attention too. So Gruel, maybe you could actually stand guard for her? Just so we can smell a little bit further into that tall grass and make sure he doesn't get too close. I think I'll actually leave her there with all of her turns, just in case we need to slap him away. Though in all honesty, we might need to move her to a different throne. One a little bit further away from that very dangerous savanna. It seems like this is where all of the rogue males are lurking, so we might just be a little bit too close to their territory. Maybe Gruel would even be the one to urge her to leave. Her little guard, and her little brother too. He's so young, but I think he's very responsible at heart. He probably wants to make himself seem a bit older than he is. So that's why he's taking his role so seriously. He doesn't want anyone to treat him like a little kid. Hopefully our two mothers will be able to make their way over to the nest though. We'll have Lazla scoot to this nest, and then Cuckoo can help us out by breeding again with Anair. That'll leave most of the acorn cracking to Rocco, unless he needs to go chasing after the bunnies instead, just while North is busy. So let's bring you two down to our very first stinky fruit tree, and we'll see if you guys can get to work. So the purse now takes 30 licking actions in order to unlock it in our mutation menu. That means that we could lick our creature's wounds if they were injured, but we can also use these fruits to our advantage. When one of our creatures interacts with this tree, they get a little debuff on them that allows our other tribe mates to lick off the stinky juice. So far, this has been the fastest way that I've found to unlock the purse now, especially on the Whale Island when there aren't any leeches. Though if you do have leeches swimming around, you could also leave it on one brave creature and just make sure that you lick their wounds every single turn without taking the leech off of them. They won't actually take a damage as long as you lick the wounds, so that's another way to work around it if you don't have the stinky fruit trees. But here's our wandering male friend, and it looks like this one might be sick too. He still doesn't have any of those special genes, so I think Mama Anair is going to have to use her ram horns again to send him packing. Hopefully you two can draw his attention, because I don't want him noticing Ananame. With her deformed paw, 
A baby between them could end up being a disaster. Oh my gosh, do we have another one out here too? Oh, there are so many rogue males in that tall grass. Yeah, we are definitely going to have to move our creatures a bit further away from the savannah. I'm sure it won't stop them entirely, but it has to be better than this. There's plenty for us to explore out here anyway, and it looks like there's a lot more resources for us to use to our advantage. So after you two have your next babies, we'll see if you can find a better place to set up your nurseries. So let's see if we can sneak another mermaid into our tribe before they're all ready to pack up and leave. No, I don't think he has. Oh, wait a second. He does have the tail fin. He was hiding it right behind that big crown of ram horns. So now Lapis is going to have a little singing buddy. As long as we can find him another good stump to set up on. Another good throne for one of our royal mermaids. The next name on my list is Echo. So welcome to our tribe. You know, I think we actually had a very royal member of the Tribe of the Tides who was named Echo too. So this is kind of a callback in a way of our former King of the Sea. And as for you, little one, do you have that lovely scorpion tail in your genetics? All right, so now we have two females who could possibly pass that on to one of their babies. And she's very pretty too. She has spots just like her father does. And she also has those two running legs. So she'll be another good one for us to take out exploring, looking for food to bring back to her family. The next name on my list is Freckles. So welcome to our tribe as well. And now we'll have to be super, super careful as we try to maneuver our way around these rogue males. We might actually want to bring both of their mates back to the nursery. That way we could breed them again just in case because they are absolutely relentless, and we don't want to make any mistakes. If we move Arako all the way down here, then he should be able to block the advances of the rogue male and the grasses, and then hopefully we can breed you with Laysla again, so she'll be free to move. Then as Laysla watches after the babies, as always, gathering all of those berries along the way, we should be able to scoot Anair to the other side of the rock, so she can breed again with her mate too. And now you guys are free to pack up your nurseries as soon as your babies are old enough to do so. But oh my goodness, all of these bunnies. You guys even have a little bunny friend helping you pick the stinky fruits. Well, this is quite the turn of events, North. I didn't think you were quite so friendly with these bunnies. It looks like they even stole every last one of the berries next to Sunny, too. But if you wouldn't mind, Sunny, Go ahead and lick the stinky smell off of North for us, and then we'll have them both pick some more and do it all over again. One at a time to maximize productivity. Now we will want to make sure that we pick up the few acorns we still have under this tree before we do eventually move all of our creatures away, just so we don't end up leaving any extra food lying around. And Aname can help out with the berries, maybe pick up some of the extra grass, that way we might be able to see any wandering creatures who happen to hear Lapis singing. And Gruel, of course, dutiful as ever, can settle himself down right in front of her stump, eager to guard her from all of those bunny fiends. Go ahead and sing your songs one more time as the bunnies dance around your kingdom. Unfortunately, they're the only ones who seem to notice today. Now we'll have to see if we can sneak the ladies away without showing the rogue male where we're going. We don't really want him to tag along in our shadow. Oh, did you see that? There was like smoke coming up from this tree over here. Wait a second, was that water? Is this like the whale's blowhole? Oh my gosh. What happens if we set our creatures up right next to it? Do you think they get injured? Or do you think they go flying off the whale? We might have to have yet another one of our brave explorers investigate that too. Kind of unfortunate that it's right under the tree. That is quite an interesting trap. There's even rocks around this one too. Maybe not the best one for our cracker jaws to set up underneath after all. No wonder the rogue males prefer this area. They don't have to deal with the blowhole of the whale and they also have some much safer resources to gather from. 
But maybe one of you could go after the bunnies. Sunny and North are busy right now, so I think Garul is going to have to settle for this job to give Lapis a little bit of extra food to eat. After all, her strength is very important. She's one of the only creatures who knows those songs right now, so we have to make sure that she's well fed. Now let's see how the effort is going to unlock the purse now. We're at 7 out of 30 so far. Unfortunately, we have depleted this tree, so we might need to send them off to one of the others. Actually, this would be the perfect place to farm out those licking actions with two trees in the same area. So I think it's quite likely that we'll have it unlocked by the next episode. And then hopefully we'll be able to find some suitable partners to stick that into their mutation menus. We definitely need to figure out who Ananame is going to breed with too. She only has nine days left on her lifespan. And with that awful fertility, she's probably going to need to get started on her family sooner rather than later. Maybe the addition of the beak genetic inside our tribe will be enough to lure those mythical winged creatures our way as well. If I remember correctly, the creatures with the wings should be able to sit on top of the trees. So since being high atop the stumps allow us to call wild animals, I wonder if those with the wings would be able to do the same. So maybe Lapis and her brother Echo will have a bit extra help once the birds do finally infiltrate our tribe. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!